So we've got a question here, we need to find three solutions to this equation. So 55a plus 65b plus 143c equals 1, where a, b and c are integers. So how are we going to go about finding that? Well, there's more than one way of doing this question. But in this video, I'm going to look at one way in particular. So the place to start is to find the prime factors of each of these coefficients and see if there's any matching between the three coefficients. So 55 prime factorization of that is 5 and 11. OK, 65 prime factors of this one is 5 and 13. So straight away we can see we've got a 5 and a 5 in this one. So they match. So that's a good thing. And then 143 is made up of 11 and 13. So now we can see that there's common factor in this one. And the 11 is a common factor in this one. So we can match these up somehow and find a solution that way. So what I'm going to do is first, I'm going to match up A and B first. So A and B first. So I'm just going to put that in brackets so we can see where we're going. And then after I've done this one, I'm going to find a factor with A and C and a B and C. So we can go find our three solutions that way. OK, so A and B, it's got a matching uh, factor of five. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to rewrite this equation, take the five out of the A and the B. I write this as 11a plus 13b. So those multiplied out still give us the same part of the equation to start with. Then I'd add 143c equals 1. OK, so now I'm going to just call this part here in the brackets. I'm just going to call this capital A. So that's what I'm going to call 11A and 13B. So I'm going to write this here. A equals 11A plus 13B. So I'm going to take that out of there for now. So now what I'm looking for is a solution for C. So I can have 5A plus something equals 1. So that's the next thing we're looking for. So 5A plus 143c. So now what I'm looking for is a congruence. So is congruence with 1. And then because we're looking at this factor 5, I want it to be a modulus 5. OK. Now, 5a modulus 5, I'm now going to eliminate that. So now what I'm looking for is just a solution for this 143c is congruent with 1 modulo 5. Now, because we're going modulo 5, to make the calculations easier, I can eliminate this 140, and now I can go for 3c is congruent with 1 mod 5. Now, some quick multiplying in my head. I can see if I put a value of 2 in for C, I'll get 6 is congruent with 1 mod 5. So now I'll say C is congruent with 2 mod 5. Or I can write this as any value as 2 plus 5k. So k is an integer. So that if I could put in a 7 there, 7 threes are 21. That's congruent with 1 mod 5. Same with 12 and any other number you want to choose for. You can even go into negative numbers and put k in as minus 1. So then you put c as minus 3. 3 times minus 3 is minus 9. Minus 9 is congruent with 1 mod 5. So you could do that if you wanted. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this equation and just for k equals 0, I'm just going to plug in c equals 2. So I'm going to now write here, let c equal 2. OK, so this part now, this is just part of my working out. I'm now going to go bring this back down here. 
So now I've got five. This bit here I'm going to call A plus 143 times two, that's my C, equals one. So now, just simple algebra, I'm just going to say 5A equals one minus 143 times two. So 143 times two is 286. One minus 286 is minus 285. Now, I know I'm going to get an integer solution for this because I went through this part of the calculations. So now I've got A equals minus 57. OK, so now I'm going to put this on here onto my calculations. A equals minus 57. OK, now what I want to do is find some solutions for A and B. So now I'll just draw another line under here. And now what I'm looking for is 11a plus 13b equals 1. Now we need integer, integer solutions for this. Now there'll be two obvious solutions which are below the value of 13. There'll be a positive and a negative for a and the opposite sign for the b. So possible solutions here. I'm looking for a number I multiply by 11 by, which is one more than the multiple of 13. So if I multiply this by six, that will give me 66. So let's A equals six. I'll then have 66. I now need a value for the B. So if I've got a positive A, I'll need a negative B. So now B is minus five. That will give me my minus 65. So plus minus 65 equals 1. So that's a possible solution I've got for here. So A equals 6, B equals minus 5. Another possible one is for a negative. I can then go for multiples of 13, which are one more than a value of a multiple of 11. So 13, 26, 39, 52, 65, 78. So if I put B equals 6, that will then give me a plus 78. And then for my value of A, for being the negative, I'm looking for 77, which would plug in an A equals minus 7. So then that will give me minus 77 plus 78 equals 1. So that takes care of an A and a B. So now all I want is, for my A, I need a 6 multiplied by my capital A and my B multiplied by my capital A. So now what I want is, for my A here, I've got A equals 6 times minus 57. And for my B, got B equals minus 5 times minus 57. And my C for these two numbers is 2. Now 6 times minus 57, 5 6 is a 30, 7 6 is a 42. So I've got minus 342. Now 57 times 5 is positive 285. So that's going to give me one set of solutions for when C equals 2. So I'm just going to write these up here now. So when C equals 2, A equals minus 342 and my B equals 285. So that's my first set of solutions. I'm going to leave that for you guys to check and now I'm going to find the next set. Instead of using A and B, I'm going to go for A with C. So A and C. So now I'm going to take these off the board then I'm going to start off some new calculations to find my next set. 
Okay, so for A and C, so I need to put these two together with their common factor, which is 11. So I'm now going to rewrite this equation with 11 times 5A plus 13C. And you'll see that the 5 and the 13 will come from the other factor, which is not the 11. And then add 65B, and that's going to be equal to 1. Now what I need to do is the 5A plus 13C, as I did before, just call this RA. So now I'm going to write here A equals 5A plus 13C. That's my A. So now I'm going to rewrite the equation as 11A plus 65B equals 1. Okay, so now what I need to do as before, I need a solution to 65B is congruent with 1, and because this factor here is, so this coefficient here is 11, I'm into mod 11. Okay, so what will be equal to make this to be equal to 1? So I keep multiplying this 65, so I've got 130. 195, 260, that's not going to work, 325, let's just write them down here, so 65, 130, 195, 260, 325, 390, so what's this one, this is going to give me 60, that's no good, 390, 4, 5, 5, that's no good, let's just keep going, 4, 5, 5, so actually we can go all the way up to 10, so 650, I've just seen, because 660 will be a multiple of 11, so if, if B equals 10, so if we've got 65 times 10 is congruent with 1 mod 11, that will give me 650 is congruent with 1 mod 11. Now I know 660 is a multiple of 11. So if I add 1 to 660 for 661, I know there's a difference then of 11. So therefore we know that this one is good. So therefore, I'm going to, this time I'm going to let my B equal 10. So let's just write this up here underneath these solutions. Let B equal 10. Okay, so now let's just draw a line under this. So now we're going to bring this down. So now I've got 11A plus 65 times 10 equals 1. This time my 11A equals 650 bring on the other side, 1 minus 650 is minus 649. And again, because we did this calculation, we'll know this will give us an integer solution. So this time I know that my A, if I divide this by 11, I know 660 is a solution, so it's going to be, which is uh, 60 times 11, so this is going to be minus 59. So A is minus 59. Okay, so now I need solutions for this 5a plus 13c. So 5a plus 13c equals 1. And there'll be two solutions under the value of 13, where an a is positive and a c is negative, and then the vice versa of that. So let's go for a negative c value. So if C is 2, that would give me a 26. So that would give me plus 26. Therefore, then my A will have to be minus 25. So therefore, my A equals minus 5. And then that will give me a correct solution here. There will also be one where a C is negative and an A is positive. I'm going to leave that for you guys to calculate. But for now, I've got my A equals minus 5. And my C equals positive.
positive 2. So all I need to do now is multiply them up by this minus 59. So my a equals minus 5 times minus 59 and my c equals positive 2 times minus 59. Okay, 59 times 5 is 295. So that would also render the two minus signs into a positive. So that's the correct answer. And my C here is going to be minus 118. So now I've got two more solutions. So for B equals 10, C equals 2. And sorry, my C equals minus 118, and my A equals 295. So there's three solutions for the values in there. I'm going to let you guys check those out. So let's rub these out, and now I'm going to mix B and C together. Okay. So we don't need that anymore. These are good solutions. Take this off the board. Okay, so now we're looking for B and C. So B and C has got a 13 as a common factor. So now we've got 13 and then we've got 5B plus 11C. And then we add the A, which is 55A. And that equals to one. Okay, so we got this far now. So now I'm going to let this 5b plus 11c be my capital A. So let's just capital A equal 5b plus 11c. So let's just rewrite this up. 13a plus 55a equals 1. So now what we need to do is, as we did before, work in modulo 13. So we eliminate this. So I need to find a solution for 55A is congruent to 1 modulo 13. OK, so what value of A is going to be congruent to 1 modulo 13? So I know that if I multiply 55 by 9, I'll get 495 and 494 will be divisible by 13. That's 38 times. So if my A equals 9, then I've got 495 is congruent to 1 modulo 13. So let's let A equal 9. So that takes care of that. OK, so let's take the modulus bit out now. And now what we're looking for now is 13A plus my A is 9. So 55 times 9 is 495 equals 1. That's our equation there. So now 13A equals 1 minus 495 which is minus 494. Now because I did this part of the equation I know I've got an integer solution for a and the 13s into 494 I know that's going to be 38. So minus 38. So that's an important number I've got here. a equals minus 38. Okay. So now what I'm looking for now is solutions for 5b plus 11c equals 1. OK, and we know there's a positive b and a negative c, along with a negative b and a positive c. So let's find a solution for this one. So we've got 5b plus 11c. So if we let, let's c equal 6. So if c equals 6, that's going to give me 5b plus 66 equals 1. So now my b is going to be a negative value, negative 65. So let b equal minus 13. So 
minus 65 plus 66 equals 1. So B is minus 13, C is 6. Okay, so now with all this, I've got my B equals minus 13 times my capital A, which is minus 38. So 38 times 13, so that's 380 plus 114. That's 494, and my C equals 6 times minus 38. So 6 times minus 38, which equals 176, 114, 228 with a minus. So that's my next lot of solutions. So let C equal, sorry, let A equal A equals 9 and then with that my C will equal minus 228 and my B is 494 and that is my three solutions to this equation okay okay so I'm going to let you guys Check these answers, put in the comment down below, see if you think they're correct or not.